สวัสดีค่ะ Today we are making ราดหน้า one of the most underrated Thai noodle dishes made of pork gravy poured over chewy fresh rice noodles. It's a popular street food you can find all over Thailand, but not so much overseas. I'll talk more about the dish as we go, but first let's break down what we need to make. There are four components to ราดหน้า: the pork, the gravy, the noodles, and the chili vinegar. Don't worry, they are all easy. First, the marinated pork. The pork is so important that the quality of a ratna restaurant in Thailand is almost synonymous with how tender and flavorful their pork is. I am using pork butt, which is pork shoulder, not the butt, because it's fatty and flavorful. You can use loin or tenderloin if you prefer it lean, but know that the pork butt is going to taste better. Trim off any chunks of fat if you like, and then thinly slice it. I'm going to marinate it with oyster sauce, soy sauce, sesame oil, sugar, and white pepper. Give that a mix. Then the trick to juicy tenderness. I'm going to add tapioca starch and one egg white. This is a common technique in Chinese stir fries called velveting. The combination of the starch and the egg white forms a protective shell that prevents the meat from drying out, keeping it juicy, tender, and it'll also add a nice mouthfeel that is indeed velvety. You can apply this technique in other dishes as well, and I will talk more about that in the blog post. Noodles. The original ratna uses fresh, wide rice noodles or ho fun noodles. I'll get to substitutes in a second, but you want to look for these at Chinese grocery stores. And most of the time, they're gonna be in the fridge, but sometimes they're not. If you buy them and they're cold, hard, and stuck together, don't panic. Separate them into small chunks best you can, and then microwave them for a minute. Take them out, separate them into even smaller chunks, and then zap them again until they're hot and soft, and you can peel them apart. And be careful here. Don't burn your hand. Warning: Do not try to peel them apart when they are still cold. Unlike pasta, rice noodles become hard when they're refrigerated, and if you try to peel them, they're just gonna break into small pieces. But once they're hot, they'll regain their softness and elasticity, and then it won't be a problem. If these noodles aren't available, here are some options. You can use thin rice vermicelli or s e n m i which is actually a popular option for homemade ratna because these are pantry staples for Thai people. Or you can use wonton noodles or what we call bam mi. The thin ones or the flat ones will both work. You can also get a little fancy and deep fry the thin ones and make crispy ratna, which is also very popular. If you're going to use one of these alternative noodles, I'll include the how-to in the blog post. Moving on. Once you've got your rice noodles pulled apart, drizzle a little dark soy sauce or black soy sauce on them to stain them for a nice color, but it's not necessary. Let's start cooking. First, we're gonna toast our noodles. Get your wok or a nonstick pan really hot, and then add a little bit of oil. Once it's hot, add the noodles in, and then don't touch them. Let them toast so that they can char a little bit. Once that's happened, you can give everything a flip, and then toast the other side. The noodles are gonna start to get a little bit clumpy. Don't worry, they will unclump once the sauce goes on. But you want to take them off the heat before they get too clumpy. If you get this nice charred mark, perfect. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. Set these aside while you make the sauce. Fun fact: In Thailand, you usually find ratna in restaurants that specialize in it. Maybe it's a cart, a street side restaurant, or maybe in a food court. But places that sell ratna often also sell this other dish that you might already know: pad s i y u which is a stir fry using the same noodles. This is because if you've got ingredients for ratna, you basically have everything that you need for pad s i y u as well. So if you have ingredients left over and you don't want to make ratna again, my pad s i y u recipe is ready for you in. The description. Now, the star of the show, the gravy, which requires this key ingredient. This is tau j i a o which you can think of as the Thai version of miso paste, but it's runnier. It's not easy to find, but you can use miso paste instead, or you can also use the Korean donjang. I have made ratna before using this low sodium miso, and it was great. Husband didn't even notice that I changed anything. If you're going to use regular sodium miso, maybe start with a little bit less, and then you can always add more at the end. In the same wok that we use for our noodles, we're gonna saute some garlic with the tau j i a o until the garlic starts to turn golden. Deglaze with the good homemade pork stock. More on that in a little bit, and then add our seasonings: soy sauce, golden mountain seasoning, sugar, white pepper, and a little sesame oil, which is optional. 
If you don't have Golden Mountain sauce, you can also add Maggi seasoning or oyster sauce instead. Bring it to a boil and while you wait, mix together some tapioca starch with just enough water to dissolve it. This is gonna be our thickening agent and tapioca starch is the traditional starch and is my preference, but cornstarch will also work. Once the sauce is fully boiling, add the pork and quickly spread it out so that the pieces are not stuck together. It is very important that you put the pork in when the liquid is fully boiling. That temperature is required to seal the pork, to instantly cook the velveting mixture so that it gels up around the pork. If it's too cold, it's just gonna wash away all that velveting. Once the pork is separated, Add the Chinese broccoli, which for this I have thinly sliced the stems on a bias and then roughly chopped the leaves. Your heat, by the way, should be on high this whole time. Stir the vegetables in and then I'm gonna give my starch slurry a stir one more time because it will settle as it sits. And then once I notice bubbling in the sauce, I'm gonna add about half of my slurry and stir that in. You'll notice the sauce starts to thicken, but before you add more starch slurry to make the sauce thicker, you wanna wait until the sauce is boiling because that's how you know that the starch you've already added has done its job. Don't make the sauce too thick. There is nothing worse than the gloopy ratna sauce. You want it just thick enough to coat the noodles. And that is it. You just give it a taste and make sure the seasoning is good. Add more salt or soy sauce mm. if it needs it and it's done. A note about the pork stock. As you saw, the gravy is made mostly of pork stock, so if that's not good, your dish is not gonna be good. Yes, I do recommend a homemade Thai-style pork stock for the right flavor. I do have a recipe for it. It is easy, and you can even make it in an Instant Pot. That's what I do. If you don't eat pork, chicken stock will also work, but again, homemade Thai-style for the right flavor. One last thing, prik nam som or chili vinegar. This is a classic condiment that is always served with ratna and technically it is optional, but for me, I think it's necessary. Simply slice any kind of hot chilies. I'm using Thai chilies here, but jalapeno serranos will work also. And then just add it to some white vinegar. That's it, let it sit for at least 15 minutes and this will keep forever in the fridge. And when you go to use it, you can eat the chilies or not. So by now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, this looks nothing like a Thai dish. No lemongrass, no coconut milk, not even fish sauce. In fact, this looks more like a Chinese dish. And you are right, because ratna is a dish of Chinese origin. There are millions of Thai people with Chinese ancestry. I am one of them. And so naturally, there's a lot of Chinese influence in Thai cuisine. So it's not uncommon to see a Thai dish that looks very much like a Chinese dish. For example, most of our noodle dishes and cashew chicken. Time to put it together. Now, ratna literally means to pour something on top of something else. So that's our instruction to rat the sauce onto the na of the noodles. A little chili vinegar on top, of course. And if you want, you can also add a little roasted chili flakes to make it spicier. And it's ready to go. Let's eat. Give it a good mix first. And if your noodles felt clumpy at any time, it should release with the gravy to compose the perfect bite. Mmm, mm. oh, so good. <sighs> the pork is so incredibly flavorful and tender. Like you can put that pork on anything and it'll be good. The vegetables are still crunchy and that's really important. That's why you wanna add the vegetables and you don't wanna just let it simmer to death. You want that freshness. A little bit of vinegar really brightens that rich, salty gravy and it is just a beautiful, beautiful dish. One last thing today. If you've seen me cook before, you probably noticed that this show looks different. That's because we are experimenting with a new style to hopefully bring you a more engaging show and a more informative show. We've been doing this for over 10 years and this is the biggest change we've ever made. So I thank you in advance for your support. 
in particular our Patreon members. So in this video, I want to do a special shout out to all of you. Thank you you guys so much for your support. Even a couple of bucks make a difference. It's much more meaningful than you might think, both in monetary terms and in fueling my spirit to keep me going when things are hard sometimes. In the future, I will call out members who pledge above a certain tier as a reward, but just for this one, I wanted to publicly thank everyone for your support all these years. And that's it! The recipe and more details will be on hotthaikitchen.com as always. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawadee ka!